Good morning. It is crazy foggy this morning and I really, really like mornings like this. It's also 38 degrees. Three days ago, it was 83 degrees. Uh-oh. Look at that. That's frost. Frost came early this year. The garden is looking kind of sad. Farm update. Standing next to two big piles, one of wood chips and one just compost. My neighbor next door let me borrow his bobcat. I need another jacket. My neighbor let me borrow his bobcat for a whole day. I didn't realize how much compost I had around here. I had three compost piles and two piles of wood chips. I made them into one and then I put them real close to my garden. Put them real close to my garden so that I can, you know, get the stuff over there real easily. It was a lot of fun to play with a bobcat. I'm not used to that kind of stuff. I feel like a real farmer. have to use the ATV to get all my feed out here today because my dad has taken the ATV back. Ours died a long time ago and I haven't replaced it. Instead, I went from a four car family down to two. I sold the minivan yesterday. So now I gotta go buy my own ATV because I'm hauling three bags of feed to these party animals every, every other day now. ETVs make that a real, real easy. Oh, they look happy now, don't they? So here's your pasture poultry pro tip of the day. I don't know where I saw this. I, I don't think I thought of it myself, but it's one of these Y combination things on your hose and then a sprayer. So the sprayer is for washing off your uh, you know waterers and anything else because it has a nice high pressure on it get that stuff off of there But it's really slow for filling buckets. So you put this on here You close that now your sprayer doesn't work open this one now you can fill buckets Like five times faster, so it's really nice to fill the bucket with this but use this to spray it off So passion poultry pro tip no charge now, I know what you're thinking on a beautiful morning like this. Randy, what is that sweet, sweet garden tech on your belt buckle? Well, I'm gonna show you as soon as I get it open. It's got this awesome case. Check this out. Stylish. That, that sweet piece of garden tech is called a refractometer made by VG. That bad boy right there. Check that out. This is a refractometer, and what you use it to do is measure the dissolved solids content of plant juices. It's pretty cool, because you just look through it like that, and you have yourself an instant scientific measurement of the quality of whatever you're growing in your garden, which is pretty cool. So a lot of people have heard of these. I don't know how many people actually own one. You can buy these on Amazon. I'll leave a link in uh, the description of the video, the one that I got. Um, but essentially, what you use these for is to determine if your tomatoes or whatever it is you're growing in your garden are total garbage or actual quality. Now, everybody loves Garden Fresh and they love everything that comes out of their garden because it's fresh and you know you grew it and you have it your whole life uh, seemingly invested in it. You've been waiting for tomatoes. You've been waiting like 70 days to get these things, right? <clears throat> but how do you know that it's all been worth it in terms of nutrition and like quality of produce? Like, are, is it any better than what you can get at the farmer's market or what you can get at the grocery store? Well, this little contraption right here, that's how you tell. So Bricks is pretty cool because it measures dissolved solids in a solution and and that's fancy scientific speak for how much stuff is in the juice of a plant or a fruit or a vegetable something like that and essentially what it means for gardening is most of those dissolved solids are sucrose or sugar right you have photosynthesis the the plant gets sun 
and through photosynthesis it creates uh, sugar from that and carbon dioxide and it takes those sugars and it puts them out into the fruit it uses them for its own metabolism and then it shoves them down in the roots and it feeds the plant life or it feeds the uh, soil life underneath it so it's a really cool system but how do you tell the difference between a good tomato and a bad tomato well one of the ways you do that not only by just you know, looking at it, making sure that it looks healthy and no insect damage, stuff like that, but also that it has a lot of dissolved sugar in it. And a long time ago in the 1800s, a German scientist came up with a measurement, a way to measure that. And by noticing that the amount of dissolved solids in a solution actually bends the light as, it come, as light comes through that solution, how much it bends the light is proportional to how much dissolved solids are in there. So he was, you know, loved by brewers and, and, and vintners and people at wineries because they are able to measure the quality of their produce right out in the field with a, with a cool little instrument. They didn't have to bring it back to a laboratory or something like that. And so a little, a little tool like this called a refractometer was born. And it's really easy for home gardeners like us to be able to use it especially on stuff like tomatoes because you can just grab a tomato and you move this little slide back here and you put the juice right there flip the slide back you look through it and then there's a scale in there and there's a difference between a light and a dark spot and right where that difference is you can see on the scale a number and that number is your bricks number I'll show you how it works Let's take any old tomato tomatoes are pretty cool because you can just just smash them right like that but what you want to do is get the juice right on right on the little slide just a little bit of juice just like that okay just see this and just juice it just like that try not to get any seeds or any pulp or anything on like that then you flip that over and then you can look right through there and you can kind of see it but the camera won't be able to pick it up, but you can pull through and you can look at this. And the cool thing about this is that this says that the bricks of this tomato is six. Now, what does that mean? Is six good? Is six bad? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can go online, go to bionutrient.org. It's the uh, really awesome website. Some people doing some awesome work about nutritional density, nutritional quality. What you get is the refractive index of crop juices chart. And it gives you the poor, average, good, and excellent numbers for, I don't know, 50 different vegetables, fruits, and grasses. Yes, grasses, they actually do this to measure content of, of pastures so you can know how good your pasture is, right? And I see under here tomatoes, poor tomatoes, four. Okay, so we're better than poor, right? Average tomatoes, six. That means I have an average tomato. Amazing tomatoes, 12. Good tomatoes, six. It's all right here, folks. It's pretty cool. Now, the real interesting part of this is when you start comparing your garden to itself from previous years, when you start comparing different types of the same plant, like different types of tomatoes, and when you start comparing the stuff you find at the farmer's market or at the grocery store because you can really start to determine if you're growing something that is better than what you can buy and that's when the real like quality and is this worth the time and is this worth the money because I guarantee you if you play your cards right and you focus on soil health and remineralization of your so soil you will do better than anything that you can find in a grocery store or at a farmers market or anything like that so I'm gonna grab a few tomatoes and let's go see what their, what, what their bricks values are. All right, so I have with me four, five, five different kinds of tomatoes in my garden, right? I got the little red cherry, I got the pear tomato, I got a really small kind of slicing tomato, I got this black tomato, which isn't quite ripe yet. Then I have just your regular old better boy kind of you know, whatever, multi-purpose tomato. And the cool thing about this is that you can keep reusing this 
Uh, the only thing is you want to do is you want to wash this off with water in between each of your readings so that you clear it off so the readings don't like mess with each other. What you do to clean this off, just get yourself a thing of water there, just dip it in there and rinse it off. A good way to know if it's clean enough is you can put just water on the tray or on the slide and then you can look through it. Sometimes a little easier to look this way. And if it reads zero, that means it's clean. If it doesn't read zero, then you should use distilled water and then there's a little calibration screw on here and you can move that so that it reads zero. If you were a purist, you would definitely use, you know, distilled water, but you know, we're not, we're not exactly doing a super precise uh, measurement or experiment here. So it's good enough just to use tap water. Okay, so let's get to it. Here is one tomato. Again, you can just plunge or you can use a knife, cut it off and squeeze it out. And this works for a lot of different things. Uh, if you have something that's harder, what you want to do, like a carrot, put that in a food processor and just grind it all up and then just squeeze some of the juice on there. And then you'll be good to go. So just plunge it like that. This is a tomato from the first one I showed. So I'm expecting it'll be, you know, closer to six. And this one actually is eight. So the ripeness of the tomato, this one is much more ripe than the previous one I had, makes a difference. And if you're wanting to compare, uh, you should do this at the same time of day. Because as the sun is on your plants, they start to photosynthesize more. It's just an automatic process. They, don't, they can't shut it off. If you do it at say seven in the morning and then three in the afternoon, the measurements of the amount of sugar in the plant juices are gonna change. That's more true of plants that you're testing where you're testing the leaves than the fruit. But still, you wanna, you know, if you're watching over the course of, of a couple of days or a couple of weeks or something, you wanna make sure you're just being, uh, just, just being consistent with your readings. Okay, so now this one, which not quite ripe, Actually, none of these are really ripening this year. It's kind of hard, so I gotta really smash it. Get it on there. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty green tomato. You can see it's pretty green in there. I don't know if this is really useful. Yeah, it's a two. Not gonna be good to eat. One of the reasons to do this is that the higher the bricks, the higher the sugar, the higher the other dissolved minerals and ions and stuff in it, the tastier it is. All right, one of these little, little guys. A little bit of juice on there. A lot of seeds too. Put that on there. This little guy, this little guy is also a six. We just got average tomatoes this year. Now these smaller ones, like this pear tomato, these ones you're actually gonna have to you know get your knife or get into can't really plunge into them but like I said it's, it's pretty easy it's pretty easy to get juice on there just make sure you get any pulp or stuff off of it and then make sure that the make sure that the the slide covers is covered in juice there's no bubbles or anything in there oh these pear tomatoes, the kids wonder why I don't like them. Three, that's poor. I think they're terrible. They are mealy and ugh. On the other hand, these little Matt's Wild Cherry, little red guys, also it's little Sweet 100s that you can get at the big box stores. The reason they're called Sweet 100s. They're just better at dissolved solids, meaning they got more sugar in them. And everybody loves stuff with more sugar in it. All right, let's see what this guy's at. Wow, a nine. Huh? That's why these little guys taste a lot better. Oh, check it out. Check it out. I actually found one of these black ones that is actually ripe. It's not green. There's like a bajillion green ones. And just one, just one that is, it's all janky on the side and it's got a, it's got a slug on it. So we're not going to eat that one chickens will eat it though. So I just want to see what this one is, see if it's any good. 
and it's also a six, okay? So it's gonna be a, you know, probably the same taste of what you could get at a good farmer's market. You know those tomatoes you get uh, that were clearly greenhouse grown, came from some other country. You're getting them in, say, Minnesota in the middle of January. Ugh. Try this with that. I think I tried it once and it, it was like a two. I mean, it was really bad, it's really gross. So, use this little tool. It'll really help you if nutrient density is a goal in your garden. Uh, usually you can tell by the taste, but this gives you a little bit of quantitative ver verification. Uh, the other thing is, is these are temperature sensitive. So the bricks measurements are completely based on 20 degrees Celsius. So you may have to get out and do some math or just ask Google, you know, what is 20 degrees in Fahrenheit or something like that and find out what temperature you're at right now. And on these, uh, oh, it's not on the, on the bricks calculator. It's actually on the brick sheet. It's actually in the operation manual. The operation manual, there is a temperature correction table. So what you do on this is you look at the temperature in Celsius. Yes, you still have to go and, you know, be uh, mathy. The world runs in the metric system. It's just us Americans that, that uh, can't get it right. And then you look and see what your bricks measurement is. And then there's a correction factor based on your temperature. So if it was uh, 21, well, that's a bad example. If it was 10 degrees Celsius and the bricks was five, you would have to subtract 0.56 from that value to get the true bricks value. So that's just, you know, again, we're, we're, we're kind of looking for ballparks here between one and two bricks is really where we're making distinctions. So a temperature correction isn't that big of a deal, but if you want to be, you know, more precise about it, like I kind of do, then, then that's what you use. So thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate you making it all the way through. If you like what you saw here, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I've done a lot of work uh, and in my own garden to sort of learn how remineralization works and learn how to do nutrient density. And I haven't started implementing it in this garden yet, but I was able to get bricks tomatoes that were 12 in my previous garden through remineralization, composting, uh, keeping the soil covered, just a lot of soil health principles that most most gardeners don't do, but you can get amazing differences in quality and taste with just a few simple, uh, you know, things, which uh, if you want to hear more about, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is just one. Uh, I will leave a link in the description for the uh, refractometer that I have. I don't recommend getting the one that I have because the scale goes from zero to 50, and most of the vegetables that you're going to look at are probably more like zero to 20, and they have a different scale. Uh, they, they sell them with different scales. So I'll put a link to the one that I wish I had bought and not the one that I currently have. So you're going to buy, want to buy the one that you wish that you have, that, that I had bought because they're kind of expensive, but totally worth it if nutrient density is your goal, which I hope everyone out there watching that nutrient density is one of your goals because it's a lot easier to do a nutrient density by yourself than it is to try and go find another farmer or find a grocery store or something that's actually doing it. It's really hard to be able to do that profitably. So doing it yourself uh, is one way where you can really, really get that nutrient density that you're looking for uh, and be assured that you have it with tools like this refractometer. So subscribe if you like this. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. What a nice steaming pile of compost.